Hello everybody, it's Joe, and I drew a pupper today. He's a cute little guy. Unfortunately, I drew him on the wrong side of the sketchbook. See? This is the back of the sketchbook. You can see that there was a sticker here, and I tore it off. And this is the front of the sketchbook. No sticker. But... How do I know that this is the back and they didn't just move the sticker in the wrong direction? Well, if you ever want to know on a spiral bound book, if you're drawing in the back of it, open the book and turn the page. Oh, you see, it won't turn. That's because this thing right here, this little bar right there, is supposed to be in the back of the sketchbook not the front when you open a sketchbook and you turn the page it should lie like that nice and neat well that's most unfortunate um, I'm probably gonna leave this guy behind there um, I will spray him down with some fixative to protect him and um, <laughs> Just hope he doesn't get damaged. See, this is why you always got to pay attention to what you're doing. Just the little things. So, I technically had already christened this sketchbook with a sketch. It is just on the wrong side. So, I still have room for another sketch. Over here, I just have some notes. I'm going to skip this first page because... Who likes drawing on the first page anyway? And I am going to find something to draw while we talk about stuff. What stuff? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, I found a thing to draw. I'm drawing a guy. He's dancing. He's a ballet dancer. Because that, that is a thing, guys. This, this guy's a ballet dancer. And he's doing some kind of strong pose. I think I'm going to set this up first. He looks very like, like a very intense kind of pose. All right, this, I'm going to do this one right. This right here is how you draw it right. This is, you got to set things up. And sketch it out first very lightly don't commit to anything and this right here you know you guys can't see that can you there we go wow I really need to do something about that focus damn you Can we lock the focus? All right, you know what? We'll just have to deal. All right. So, there he is. Very strong pose. Looks like he's, he's, he's mad at something. Tense. And I'm going to exaggerate this leg. If you ever want to get good at like sketching stuff really quickly, I highly recommend you do like really fast figure poses. They're great if you ever want to get like get a really good loose style. That's what that's good for. And now once again I'm drawing in a place you cannot see. The mystery zone. I think maybe I should have set up this camera a bit higher. Too late now. Not about to change things. <laughs> I'm afraid of change. <laughs> there we go. Okay. 
Now that I have the basic shape, I can start detailing stuff. Now this is not supposed to be a tutorial. We're supposed to be talking about real stuff. Okay, let's talk about my class. How is my class going? I will tell you how my class is going, even though you didn't ask, but you asked because I said it, and I'm narrating for you. So, my class seems to be going pretty well. It's only the second day, so you can't expect too much within the second day. Um, we are talking about this, we were talking about this guy named St. John something or another. Um, can't really remember his full name. I know he was French. And thankfully, I don't have to remember his full name. <laughs> but I do have to know his, his, uh, his deal, like his, his whole spiel. I don't know. I don't know if that's entirely important. But we got to know the basic idea of him and what he represents. He wrote this uh, letter. Apparently, he's famous for it called... I think it was uh, what it or what is an American, and um, that guy just kind of went through a whole lot of crap. Like really, I read through his life, and he, <laughs> like looking at his life, puts things in perspective in your own life. <laughs> he he really. He's been through so much, it's, it's like, after you read what he has gone through, and all the things he had to put up with, you kind of feel better about your own life, if that makes any sense at all. I think I told somebody that when they asked me one time, uh, somebody asked me, why do I watch horror movies? Because I like horror movies. Fun fact, in case you wanted to know, I love watching horror movies. And somebody asked me, why do you like to watch horror movies? And I told them, well, you know, there are a lot of bad things out in the world. And sometimes it's nice to know that somebody else is doing worse than you. <laughs> Even if they are fictional. <laughs> I mean, honestly, is that... I'm, I'm probably kind of wrong on this. I'm not sure. But um, isn't that really the reason why people like to see things that are terrible? Like watch people that are suffering. Isn't it just, you know, you look at them and you look at your stuff that's going on. You're like, man, those people have it pretty bad. And thank God I don't have that problem. Hopefully this thing is recording. Yeah, it is. All right. But, you know, thank God I don't have that problem. <laughs> it's kind of how I feel that people look at it. I might be wrong on this. I might be wrong on a lot of things. <laughs> don't take anything I say to heart. But <laughs> the thing is, is that that's, that's kind of why I watch horror movies. And that's kind of the same thought that I had when I was looking at that guy's life. I was thinking to myself, man, I'm sure glad I am not him. He, he, his name is, what, something? St. John. I mean, I don't think he was a saint. That was his last name. But, um... He went, he, he, he was, he went to the United States to pursue, or the Americas, as they were called then. They were not called the United States. The United States was not a thing. But, um, <laughs> he went there with the idea that he was going to pursue a better life. Um, I think he was a son to a, a, a well-to-do man, I guess. He, I don't know if he was a lord. His father was, I'm not sure if he was a lord, but he apparently had land. I guess that qualifies you as a lord. So he might have been like lower aristocracy of some kind. And um, his father, um, well, I'm pretty, he, had, he must have had brothers because a lot of the, when you, when you inherit wealth, like you, the youngest do not inherit, was it the youngest? Yeah, the youngest do not inherit wealth. It usually goes to the oldest. 
So the youngest basically have to go out and earn a name for themselves. They have to earn their earn their uh, their 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 wealth, their land, and all that stuff. They're expected to go out and get it. Um, granted, I'm sure they probably get some help from their family. I would like to think they do. But um the he he that was his 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 old thing. That was his problem. So he went to the Americas to see what he can do. And um he became a farmer. He he did well. This is not him by the way. This is a dancer. <laughs> but um he he did pretty well. And um, he decided that um, his father got really ill. I don't know if this is the whole story, so you might want to look it up yourself if you're interested. But he, he, his father got deathly ill, and he went to go see his father to, I guess, just, you'd see him on his way, I suppose. Um, and his ship ends up getting shipwrecked, and he ends up in Ireland. And then he ends up having to find his way all the way from Ireland to France. I think he was from Normandy. Normandy? Yeah, Normandy. And um, he ends up having to find his whole way there from Ireland. That is, I mean, okay, so you probably think about it, like, if you're thinking about it these days... I suppose that it doesn't sound so bad, you know? You, you go, you hop on the next plane, and you're good to go. But this was back in, like, probably the 1700s. They had these little rickety ships back then. Oh, Lord, light. There we go. We got these uh, motion-sensitive light. You guys cannot see what I'm doing. You need to tell me these things. <laughs> there we go. But, <laughs> but um, they had these rickety ships back then that people rode up on, and that's what he had to ride on. And they weren't they weren't very big ships. I actually went on uh, the USS Constitution one time when I was in Boston. That's where they're keeping it these days. And um, I thought it would be bigger. And it wasn't. It was very small. Very small little tiny ship. But um, it put it into perspective what these people were riding on. <laughs> they, were, they were riding on these very... Like, I would qualify them as boats if I saw them. I would not qualify them as ships. It made... Our frigate, I was on a frigate when I was in the military. It made our frigate look huge by comparison to that. But, um, anyway, he would have ridden on one of those all the way from Ireland to France, to, to, to Normandy. And that would have been his trek. the entire way and to he went to go see his father die now thankfully he made it in time to go see his father die and i don't know what happened between point a and point b but yeah well the, that actually was not the the whole thing because on his way he wasn't just shipwrecked he ended up being detained as an american as a spy for um I think they said he was a, a they 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 considered him to be a spy uh against the Americas. So he was detained and after they decided he was not a spy, then they let him go, then he was shipwrecked. So that's like a double whammy. First he's being detained because they think he's a spy, then after they realize he's not a spy, they end up letting him go. And then he gets shipwrecked on top of that. Like, is that just the worst luck or what? So then after he sees his father, he sees his father die, I suppose, and sends him on his way, does his mourning, does his business, does, 
the burial and all that stuff. After he does all that, he ends up going back to the Americas. And when he gets to the Americas, he discovers that his wife is dead. Apparently they were attacked by natives and um, she ended up getting killed in the process. And his children were missing. So while he was gone and his house is destroyed, that's another thing. So he lost his house, he lost his wife, he lost his kids. And, um, I mean, that guy's whole life was just tragic. <laughs> just one bad piece of bad luck after another. So, also, he's a writer. I'm bringing that, I'm illustrating that point, that he's a, he's a writer. So, and the reason why I'm bringing that up is because he's a writer, basically like an ambassador telling the French about the Americas and why they should come along. But of course, while, he's, while he is a writer for that, he's, um, the, the French, they, they, st they start a war. And the French don't want to hear anything that he has to say about the Americas because they're against the Americas. So now, he's basically jobless. <laughs> so he has no job. He has no wife, he has no house, he has no children. He has nothing. The guy is like rendered absolutely, he has absolutely nothing. He's rendered completely useless. So after a while, um, he stays with a friend in the Americas and um, he finds that his children were actually living with a family up in Boston. So he did find his children. So that's one up for him. And um, then he ends up going back home. <laughs> and when he gets back home, he ends up coming home to the French Revolution. <laughs> uh, in case you guys don't know about the French Revolution, um, that was when the French were killing ever, killing all the nobles, and because well, they didn't like him, <laughs> and they were tired of being controlled by a ruling class, so they started <laughs> killing everybody. <laughs> and unfortunately, although he was uh, he was considered a lower aristocracy. He was still aristocracy. So, <laughs> so he did make it out alive. I think his children were still in the, in the in the Americas. I'm not sure what happened to his children in this whole dick, but, you know, somehow I guess they were okay. I'm not sure. I like to think so. Otherwise, it's just horrible. And somehow, some way... Now, this is my, my take on it. I'm probably wrong on this because I, I didn't get the whole story, honestly. I only got bits and pieces of the story. But um, somehow he made it out. He, he survived and he ended up um, inheriting a small bit of land <laughs> where he stayed for the remainder of his life and everything after that was okay and that was when he wrote um uh what it what it what is an american and he was writing it to the french but the french once again weren't hearing it so <laughs> they didn't care about it but um the thing about it is this guy has been through all that and he still was writing about what it means to be an american so, I mean, you talk about optimism. That guy's a captain of optimism. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to read that. I haven't read it yet. That's, some, that's one of my assignments is I have to read it or listen to it. Um, but I do plan on reading or listening to it probably tonight. <laughs>
maybe I'll let you guys know how it goes. But um, the real question, the one that really bugs me that I'm trying to figure out is how he inherited that land. If you recall what I said, the youngest of the family don't inherit anything from their from their parents. Uh, when it comes to like serfdom, you know, the ruling class and all that stuff, they have to go and earn their own title, their own way, as you know themselves. They technically are not supposed to earn anything. They're not supposed to inherit anything. That's the oldest that inherit their uh, their father's kingdom and their father's land and all that stuff. So, my question is, how did he inherit that land? Because that is crazy. I mean, that would have to mean to me that his brother died. And if his brother died, that's like, how, how did he die? What was the result of it? Well, what, what made him die? Was it the F French Revolution? If that's the French Revolution, I could figure that this guy... Like, he did not just make it out unscathed. He was probably rescued by his brother. And if he was rescued by his brother, can you imagine, like, having to live with that your whole life? I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> that whole life is awful. But still... He managed to maintain his composure. He still managed to be... I don't know if he was really that... Was he... Because this is one thing to say that, but you don't really know a person. So. <laughs> so, my point is, is that I thought it was pretty incredible that he managed to keep all of his optimism and everything throughout that whole thing throughout that whole ordeal and um, I'm not saying that people should be happy with everything they have I think that if people just are content with everything they have it kind of kind of destroys the whole idea of pursuing anything more like you have to you have to not be content. You cannot be content with everything that you have because if you stay content with everything you have, you don't want anything more. And if you don't want anything more, then you're not pushing forward. You're just standing still. You have to want more in order to pursue for something more. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be material things. It could be knowledge. It could be um, maybe you want to be good at something in particular. But if you, if you don't want anything, if you don't strive for a goal, then you're just standing still. And standing still is no way to live. It's not good to be idle. <laughs> I think somebody said it that, you know, idle hands are the devil's playground. I'm sure it's been said a billion ways, but, you know, that's the way I heard it. So that's what I'm going with. But I thought it was really impressive. Like, I admired his optimism. <laughs> ah, Lord... There we go. Light. I admired his optimism because you got to have a lot of, you have to have a, a strong will to be able to still say, hey guys, this is what's so great about the Americas after you just went through all that crap because you were in the Americas. I think I'm going to add a little highlight here. I've never really fully tested this eraser, but it seems to be okay, so I'm going to go with it. There's a bit of a shaving there. It 
So I guess you can be optimistic and still strive for more. You don't have to be... Somebody tell was I was talking to somebody and they were they were I was telling them because they were talking about a job that they were they were pursuing and they were doing their training and um, they were talking about uh, what I said make sure, try to keep a smile on your face and um, this one girl said oh, well you know. Don't, well, you have to keep a smile on your face and, and do everything they ask. And I was like, no, 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 don't do everything they ask. Don't let them walk all over you. But make sure that whatever you do, that you try to keep an optimistic outlook because, and you try to be patient. Because if you are patient, well, if you, if it's kind of a, a deal where, if you have an optimistic outlook or if you have a, 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 a positive attitude, it'll translate over to the other person. It, it, it really does. So if you have a negative outlook and you have a negative approach to things, then and it translates to the other person as well. So you, if you have a positive uh, vibe, vibe. I hate using the word vibe because it's kind of a pseudoscience-y kind of term. But if you have a po if you have a positive aura, vibe, <laughs> people people pick up on that, and they're going to reflect what you put towards them. So if they if they get a negative outlook from you, if you seem all broody and you seem all in contempt for a lot of things, then that's what they're going to get from you. And maybe they might veer away from you and find you unapproachable. Whereas if, you're, if you try to be happy, and I understand that sometimes you can't be happy and sometimes it's... You you, uh, you have trouble with that. There are some people that have genuine problems being happy. And I really don't know what to say to that. But I will say that if you, refl if you put out happiness, people are going to respond to your happiness with more happiness. It's, I find it to be the dog philosophy. Like, a lot of times, people think that dogs are always happy, but they're really not. I mean, dogs get depressed, they get sad, just like everybody else. They have moods as well as everybody else. But the thing is, is that they pant around you, they laugh, they will laugh for what dogs... They, they, they do laugh. They laugh, and they laugh a lot of times it's not because they're happy about everything it's because they want you to be happy because they feel that if you are happy then they you're going to reflect happiness back at them and then they'll be happy so it's kind of a good for the masses kind of deal well my time is actually up so i am going to wrap the scribble up i was actually going extra slow today so we will kind of fudge this little bit up. Probably should have done this from the get-go. Just wearing some ballet slippers. And down here as well. And a small shadow, because reasons. Okay, well, this has been Joe. I, this is my scribble. So until next time, see you.